In this HVAC training video, I'm showing the step-by-step -step procedure on how to use a VCRT, that's a valve core removal tool, to replace a leaky valve core. So the valve core is located in the port, and it's also known as a Schrader valve. So if it's leaking and not resealing, we need to replace it with a new one. So if we're going to replace the valve core in the port, I want to make sure that the system is off so that this port is not low in temperature and drawing the humidity and condensing water like in and around this port. So we're going to use our VCRT tool, and this particular one has a 5 16 adapter for systems such as mini splits. And we're just going to be using the quarter inch adapter right here on the end. We're going to pull the rod back. We're going to make sure that this is snug and this is snug, and then we're going to screw it onto the port. After it's on the port, uh, we're going to make sure that this valve is in the fully open position. This way the rod can push inwards, and we're going to turn this counterclockwise until we feel like we fall into it. So hopefully you just saw that. We fell into the valve core. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to be applying pressure inwards because we're going to be fighting the pressure uh, that's exerted for the R4 Tenet once it's coming around the valve core. So as we're unscrewing this out, the seal is no longer holding it in place. And so we're, we're applying pressure inwards to go against the R4 Tenet pressure pushing outwards. And so we're going to do this until we hear a click, which means that the valve core has basically exited the threads of the port. So hopefully you just heard that. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, so that means we are outside of the threads of the port. Now another crucial factor for if you've ever noticed the valve core got stuck on the way out and you lose it from the rod, what you can do is you can loosen this right here just a little bit, not to where you have like refrigerant leaking out, uh, but just enough to where the rubber grommet is not squishing uh, up against the sides of the valve core as you're pulling it out. Now sometimes I also like to turn this a little bit as we pull out, uh, but you can just pull it straight just like that. And then we're going to turn the valve to the off position. We're going to unscrew this. And there we have our valve core. So now what we want to do is we want to replace this valve core with a brand new one. We don't want to put one in uh, that was tightened in there already. Regardless of whether there was refrigerant in the service valve or not, we want to put a brand new one in because the outside of that Teflon seal is going to get squished uh, to the exact spot and position within the port. So if you put in an old one, it's not going to seal properly and it may not be leaking from the end here. It may not be leaking at the very end. It may be leaking from where the valve core seals up against the port. Now we're going to add the valve core to the end rod. And so for this tool manufacturer, they're grabbing this end of the stem. And other manufacturers may grab the flat part of the valve core. I do like the style where it does grab the end of the stem uh, because sometimes these flat edges are different depending on the age of the valve core. Anyway, so the whole point is now we want to pull all the way back because this valve's in the off position. We only have this much room, and we're going to slip this in, and we're going to lightly snug. Next, we're going to open this up, and we need to purge the air out of this little section. So we're going to open this up, and then we're going to back this up just a little bit. You're going to hear that little bit of hissing noise, and that's it. So we're just trying to purge any little air out uh, of that section. And next, we're going to go ahead and screw this in. So now we're fighting against the pressure because the R4 Tenet is pushing it out. So now we're going to use our thumb again and we're going to turn this clockwise until it's all the way in and snug. So you really need to press inwards because if you're not, you're not actually in the port as you're turning. And so there is a lot of, of force involved uh, to apply with that thumb. All right, so now we're getting tight and that's it. So now I'm going to back this out, and then I'm going to turn this to the off position, and now I want to leak check to see if the valve core is fully in the port and is holding back the pressure. Now we're going to hear a little bit come out, just like that. You want to give this a second, but basically what we're going to add now is a test cap with a hole in it. So here's our cap, and if you don't have one of these, you just use an eighth inch drill bit into the end of a cap, and you just label it to make sure that you know it's your test cap. 
The other thing is, what I'm going to do is I might just go ahead and tighten this. You see how it's wiggling a little bit? That's because I loosened this part right here. If you were getting ready to do, say, a recovery process or something like that, you'd want to make sure that this is re-snugged in place after you remove the valve core. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get to our testing. Now we're going to add our non-corrosive bubble leak detector onto the end. Now you also want to give it a little time uh, in case there's any liquid refrigerant in the valve core that may be uh, vaporizing and it's going to be applying pressure and blowing a bubble right here in the end. Uh, but we gave that about 30 seconds to have it be open before we put our cap on. And so now we're testing and we're just waiting to see if we're going to blow any bubbles right here. So this avoids putting any non-corrosive bubble leak detector in the port or into the VCRT and it's just uh, remaining on your little test cap. So it's a nice and clean procedure. I don't see any bubbles forming so it looks like we're good and we can go ahead and remove this and put on our existing cap. Now this is a test unit and so we could put a cap right here uh, but if it's in an accessible area out in the field we want to go ahead and put a locking cap on instead of a regular cap. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this is a sealed system because there's a, a little rubber gasket on the inside and so that should also help in case in the event uh, there is a small leak at the valve core. We'd want to make sure that that is nice and tight and if it didn't have a rubber o-ring or gasket inside and it was just a flare connection, you may want to drop a, a dab of refrigerant oil on the inside of here and tighten this into place because it would be a brass to brass connection. And so that would help to avoid any leaks. But in our case, we're going to be installing a locking cap. And this one also has a rubber O-ring inside. And so we're just going to use this tool uh, to screw it in. So you want to have locking caps on any accessible ports to avoid uh, somebody from accessing it and stealing the refrigerant out of there uh, for any nefarious purpose. This particular locking cap manufacturer uses the end of the rod of the VCRT tool to uh, tighten this on. It's the key for it, but manufacturers may use a variety of different key ends, and so you want to have them so that you're ready for servicing any type of unit that's out in the field. I hope this video helped, and if you want to learn more about using the VCRT tool during the recovery process or the vacuum procedure, make sure to check out some of the other videos we have linked down in the description section below. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our new second edition Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, available over at Amazon, True Tech Tools, and at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.